From my video where I show you how to upload a file from your device to an ASP.NET Core project, I got a question in the comments. Um, how do you upload this stuff onto a Azure Blob Storage account? So that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. It will be a continuation of the video where I do the uploading file. So if you haven't seen that yet, it might be recommendable to watch that first, but then you can follow this video without any hassle. So let's go. Before we're going to have a look at our code, let's dive into the Azure portal. So we're going to go to portal.azure.com. I'm going to assume that you already have an Azure account, an Azure subscription all set up. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and create that storage account because that is what we are looking at. So you can already see it in the shortcut bar here for me because, um, you know, I prepared this demo, so it's already here. Um, but to show you what it looks like uh, whenever it's not in that shortcut bar, let's go over to the create a resource. And then we're going to search for storage here and it should come up with the storage account. So if we click that and we click create, we're going to create a new storage account. Um, so here you get to choose your subscription. If you have multiple, if it's uh, if you have just the one, which is um, most likely, then it's going to be pre-selected for you here. And we're going to select a resource group. So let's do a blob upload a resource group. OK, and we've created a new one and our storage account name is going to be. So let's give this some unique name. I think this needs to be um, upload sample one, two, three. There we go. I think this name needs to be unique. So whenever you have a sample name or a name that is already taken, see you, you can't do that. So you have to have a unique name. So one, two, three, no one else came up with that name. Yay. Um, and let's choose a location. So closest for me is um, West Europe. Here we go. But, you know, figure out something that is closer to you or uh, prepare for a little bit more latency on your connection. Um, now, there is, of course, another thing that you need to configure, which is the performance, um, account kind, um, replication and all that kind of stuff. Um, I will leave that to you to figure out what that all is, because, you know, there's a lot of options here, which also have to do with a, a little bit of the cost. So, you know, um, make sure you understand what you're creating and how that might impact you or your credit card. Um, I'm just here to explain you the technical details. So I'm just going to go to review and create here down at the bottom. You can um, configure all kinds of other stuff here. You can see all the options here but um, I'll leave you uh, to figure that out for yourself. And I'm gonna just going to click create and it will go and create my resources here. So let's wait a little bit. It shouldn't be too long for this to finish. There we go. Deployment is complete. So now we can use our storage account. Actually, let's go to the resource here because there is more that we need. In a storage account, you have a couple of different things. You have containers, which is, I think, before that was known as like the blob containers or the blob storage. Um, you have file shares, which is basically just your plain old file share on a Windows machine. Uh, tables, so very simple table structure that you can use and queues. But the thing that we are looking at is containers today. So I'm going to go into containers and I'm going to add a container. And this name, you have to remember this one because this is what we'll use to upload the actual files. So so let's call this test container, something easy that we can remember here. Oh, also needs to be all lowercase. Okay, Azure, thank you. There we go, test container. And here you can specify public access level. So you can do a couple of different things here. I'm just going to keep this private. No one else has to see all the secret things that I'm uploading here. And I'm just going to click create. So then we have a container. Right now it's empty, but you know, in a little bit we can see um, that stuff is getting in here. So let's go back. And what I'm going to do next is go here on the left to the access keys. And um, this is basically your uh, things that you need to access to actually read these containers and um, upload things. Well, not just the containers, but actually your whole storage account. Um, so here you have one key, two key. Um, these are the keys that you can use to access this. And we are going to use this connection string right here. Um, so I'm going to copy this and then it's time to actually go look at some code. This sample is going to be based on a um, 
video that I did before. Um, it should pop up in your screen right now. It's all about uploading files from your phone, from your device to a ASP.NET Core server. Um, and we're going to extend that project that is used there to also upload it to this new blob container that we just created. If you haven't seen that other video yet and you want to know what it's all about, uploading files as a whole to this ASP.NET project, go check that out first. That might be a little bit handy in this case and then come back to this one. Um, so right now I'll just implement a little bit of extra code that not just uploads this file to a ASP.NET Core server, but also now puts it in that Azure service. So um, here's our server code. I have this little server project here, and this is just, uh, well, this is actually the main page. So this is going to uh, pick a file and upload that to our um, local host uh, running server. Um, I was actually looking for the controller, the upload file controller. So here it is. So this is just an ASP.NET REST controller basically. And um, I can just upload a file here with this post right here. And um, it will take the request. It will see if there's any files attached to the request. And then for each file, it's going to upload it into a uploads um, path um, on my local computer. And then, um, you know, copy that thing and then return OK. So what we're going to do next is um, actually, we first need a NuGet package. So let's install that first. So right click here on our server, manage NuGet packages, and we are going to search for Microsoft dot azure dot storage dot blob i think uh, there we go so we're going to install this one at package it has to think a little bit and we probably get a lot of dependencies oh we don't well okay great so now our uh, package is installed and um, actually the first thing that we probably want to do is go back here to the top and create a um, little client that uh, can communicate with the Azure service for us. So let's create a cloud storage account. I just know that from the top of my head, you can understand that. And we're going to let IntelliSense solve this because it's using Microsoft Azure storage. Here we go. And this is going to be our cloud storage account. Here we go. Is cloud storage account dot parse. So with the dot parse, uh, we can parse the connection string that we just um, got from our Azure service. So I'm just going to paste that in here and it should parse that and it should be able to now access our um, storage account with this connection string. Um, if you're watching this, no worries. I've reset the keys, deleted the whole storage account, so um, I didn't take the time to blur this out. This won't work anyway. Now, the next thing I want to do is scroll a little bit down here to our code that actually um, receives the file. So I'm not going to only write this to my local file. In fact, I could just remove this now if I wanted to, but um, let's just add a new thing here, which is going to be async, I'm sure of it. Um, so upload to Azure async, make it official that it's async, here we go. And I'm just going to supply the file here, so the file that we're looping through, so if there's multiple, it's going to do all the files. Um, and let just IntelliSense generate this method for us, so there we go. And now it's down here, private task, upload to Azure async, and it's going to take a iForm file, which is a built-in type from ASP.NET Core, um, and which has all the information about the file that we are trying to upload. So now that we have that, it's uh, time to write our final code. So um, there's a couple of things going on here. First, we need to um, get a cloud blob client. So get a cloud blob client is, and we're going to get that from our cloud storage account. So here we go, and we are going to say create cloud blob client. I think this is not in the IntelliSense right now because it's an extension method. And uh, because, you know, this is very specific to the blob storage. So we're going to have to add the using Microsoft Azure storage blob. So let's do that. And then it should understand what we are doing. See, it's an extension method. So you have to know it exists, but um, it's there. So make use of it. Um, then we're going to get a reference to our container inside of that blob storage. So let's make a um, cloud blob container, which is going to be that container that we've just created. And we're going to get that from our cloud blob client. This one. Get 
container reference. So there we go. And we have to specify the name. So what did I call it again? I think it was test container, all lowercase. Um, there we go. So this uh, should represent our container. But the thing is with these storage accounts, um, this doesn't necessarily mean that it exists. So let's implement a little bit of defensive code to see if it actually exists. Um, so we're just going to say if await uh, cloud blob container create if not exists async, then it's going to create it for us. And whenever we do, we also have to specify um, uh, the permissions that we just basically uh, configured from the Azure portal as well. So let's just do await cloud blob container dot set permissions async. And um, this is going to be a new blob container permissions, which takes a um, public access is um, well, I don't know actually what the, <laughs> I think it's off, right? That makes sense. So this is the equivalent of the thing that I configured in um, the Azure portal. Um, I see my await calls are giving me all kinds of red things because I didn't specify the async here. So let's do that. And now it's all good. So whenever a container is not created, um, we did create it, but you know, um, just to be sure, maybe someone deletes it or some other code deletes it. This will make sure that the container is in place and ready for us to use. Um, and now we are going to have a cloud block blob because, um, you know, uh, these kinds of binary files are going to be uploaded as uh, blocks in blobs, you know, a lot of bees. And we are going to do our, whoops, is cloud blob container dot get block blob reference. So this kind of works the same way. Um, you first get some kind of reference and it doesn't exist at this time, but it will create that reference for us and it will, um, you know, just create it and upload all the things. And uh, this is going to be the name. So basically we're just going to specify the file name here and um, that's that. And then we want to specify also the content type so that it knows what kind of content it is. That makes it easier whenever you start serving out that um, file again, then it knows how to, um, you know, send the right content type with that as well. So let's set our um, block blob dot content type. It's not this one. Uh, oh, it's in properties. We're going to set this as properties in the content type. And this is going to be easy because the file has a content type as well. So this is just going to be the MIME type. So like application slash PDF or image slash PNG, something like that. Um, so that you know what kind of file it is. And the last thing we're going to do is await cloud block blob dot upload from stream. Um, so you can do also upload from file. You can do all kinds of things, upload text. So, you know, there's lots of other options here as well. This is just one way of implementing it uh, the way I'm doing it right now. Um, so, and I'm going to say, um, well, this is actually from file. I wanted to do from stream. There we go, stream, because our file has a uh, open read stream. There we go. So now it will just take that stream and stream all the contents into our blob container that lives in Azure. So let's save this one. And whenever I start running this project, uh, I have another video on that. Go check it out. Um, it will start multiple projects at once. So it will start the server project, which is again, an ASP.NET core project, which will, um, you know, get invoked. And it will start the um, app on my phone, um, which, you know, lets us pick a file and upload that to the server that we're actually running on this machine. So it's coming up here right now. And then I say pick and upload. And I'm going to upload this beautiful waterfall right here. And it's going to upload. And in the status here, we're going to see OK. So, you know, this completed something. Um, if we look back at our controller here, it's going to return an OK whenever it did all the things. So uh, I'm going to assume that the upload to Azure has completed successfully. So let's go over to the Azure portal and see if that actually worked. Here we are in the Azure portal just as we left it. And now let's go into the Storage Explorer right here on the left. And and you can see all the different options that we've seen before, file shares, queues, tables. But the thing that we're actually interested in is the blob container. So let's go in here, our test container. And here is our file. We've just uploaded this one. And to, you know, just prove that it's actually the same thing, I'm just going to download it here, click here to begin the download. And boom, here we have our beautiful waterfall right here on the Azure portal. So 
that all worked and that is how you upload a file to the Azure blob storage. So now you know how to not just upload it to like the server that your ASP.NET Core project is running on, but also how to upload it to the Azure blob storage. And if you want to do it like to table storage or kind of other things in that area, um, it is well, kind of similar, but you know, as always, if you want to know a little bit more, um, if you can't figure it out, let me know in the comments and I'll make another video just for you. So be sure to like this video, hit that sweet subscribe button and that bell so you will be notified whenever that video is available for you immediately. Um, if you want to see the videos that have not publicly been released yet, uh, maybe consider supporting me by joining this channel with a membership and you will get the videos even before they're publicly released. That might be very nice for you. Um, other than that, I hope to see you for my next video.